What's up everyone, Art at Patience Metal Fab, and today I'm turning on the camera to grab some Renault Turbo 2 content. Now in the last episode, we did a ton of custom work to the exhaust, including an anti-lag system. You guys must have really enjoyed that because that's our best performing YouTube video of all time. So I'm gonna put a link up here if you haven't checked it out. It's a really fun one to see. In this one, we're gonna be focused on doing some of the plumbing, the cooling, and the fueling for the car, which means there's gonna be a few custom components and some aftermarket stuff going in. Max is gearing up for that right now. I'm gonna get out there, we'll chart some progress, and at the end of the video, I wanna sit down with him and Gary and just kinda of go over how all the systems work, and then we'll set up the next episode. So let's get out there, see how far he's gotten.
Gary, if I recall the original plan when Brian brought this in was to keep it period correct. This doesn't look period correct or this or this or really any of this besides the engine. To touch on that for a minute, yes, he did want to keep this correct until we fit him in the car and realized that a guy of his size doesn't fit the way the little Frenchman originally fit racing this car. Uh, it kind of all went to the wayside when we really prioritized safety. The seat set up, the steering column, the pedals, none of it made sense for him. And if this thing was gonna go sit in his collection with check marks on it, that'd be one thing. He wants to drive this. He wants to potentially take this up to a jib way and actually race it, some of the vintage stuff. Uh, so yeah, that, that kind of went away in the early stages of this build. We've tried to um, kind of keep this thing maybe in the spirit of the original car. So, you know, the big air to water cooler that was originally in the Maxi, this one's in the same place. You know, the oil reservoir, while not quite so fabricated and a little more machined, same way. And then some of the parts that do look really modern, we've kind of hidden away for that reason. This is what you would consider a resto mod, yes. Yeah, and there's plenty of original stuff on this. And one of the coolest things is added distance on the exterior. It is gonna look virtually original, but all of this stuff is actually gonna make it reliable for when he races. Well, so we got radium stuff in here for the catch can and the fuel system, the filter, the surge tank uh, is radium. Um, the air to water cooler is Plasma Man, just cause the stuff they build is so nice. Um, so it's all covered right now, but yeah, that, that's a Plasma Man cooler in there. Rated for 750 horse, so in this case, should be more than enough. Plus we got dual heat exchangers on this thing. We'll have no issue with uh, air temps on it. And then, you know, a reservoir from Moroso. Um, nothing super fancy there, pretty straightforward. Something that kind of fit where we wanted it. Had enough flash to look nice, but, uh, you know, be a little bit along the lines of what originally would have been in this car. And it's even a stretch to say that that's not fancy because it looks awesome, especially in this car. Uh, amongst those brands, the one that stands out to me is up here. It's PMF brand. We made this swirl pot that you see right here. Uh, you guys saw a little bit of footage of Max putting it together. Can you go over what this does and why we had to integrate it? The big thing with remotely mounting your radiator opposite end of the car to the engine is that bleeding the systems are a pain. Where do you put an expansion tank? Where do you put your filler? A lot of times radiators have the filler on them, but they don't wind up being the highest spot. These motors in specific are known for having a really, uh, being really troublesome as far as bleeding it. So in this case, we come up with this swirl pot. What these do, and you see swirl pots a fair amount now, is that this makes it so that the coolant actually swirls while being run through the system. And then there's enough room in the top of it. Naturally, that swirling motion keeps any of the air bubbles at the top and they release. What we like to do with ours versus just being a swirl pot is we've got the integrated expansion tank to it. So you don't have to have your overflow, your expansion tank somewhere separate. Typical 16 or 13 pound radiator cap on top. When the system burps, pushes it into the bottom of the expansion tank. When it contracts back in, sucks it back in. Do that two, three times, your system's pretty much bled. We do have a lot of these really cool parts going on the car, but a lot of Max's work over the last few weeks have been the not so exciting stuff, laying soft lines and hard lines. There's so much plumbing in this thing. And uh, you know, kudos to Brian. It's tough to be the customer at this phase because you come in, somebody's working on the car, the invoices are still coming. You just don't see the progress the same way you do when all the big shiny parts are going on. So I mean, wastegate plumbing, air to water cooling plumbing, the fuel system, the primary radiator system. I mean, this has been, you know, hard lines under, we did oil lines and coolant lines under the car and hard lines. A lot of stuff and time spent making lines, stuff you don't see when you come in and check it out. So we're kind of over that hump now. Um, we're to the next cool thing, which is the big challenge in this car with repositioning Brian the way we did. We can't utilize the factory shift linkage anymore. It was sloppy and terrible to begin with anyway. So we've kind of started working on that project. Next episode, get to see what's under the blanket. There you go, you guys heard it. So there's something to look forward to. If you haven't liked this video, please do subscribe to our page so you get a notification when the next one comes out and we'll see you then.